Hey guys, I'm Hannah. Welcome back to my DIY channel. Today I'm going to show you all about how I made this incredibly cozy electrical fireplace. You don't need a chimney, you don't need a gas line. It's so easy and keeps your house so cozy during the winter time. Here's my inspiration and as you can tell I'm super excited but also super pregnant. So let's get started. I got all my 2x4s cut at the lumber store just because I'm super pregnant and I didn't want to be carrying around that lumber. If you want the dimensions to my fireplace, they're linked on my blog below. How excited are we today to start building the fireplace? Hey yeah, so there's nothing like having a baby that will just make you want to do a crazy project like build a fireplace. So I'm eight months pregnant, but yeah, I'm building on the floor with my giant belly and I'm just trying to get all the corners square because that's really important. Okay, so I am ready to drill my first hole in. I invested in a speed square, so this ensures that all your corners are gonna be really square, which is important when you actually put everything together. Um, so I'm gonna start by doing pilot holes, and then we're gonna just use two and a half inch screws, wood screws. I wanna make this project as beginner friendly as possible, so I'm just using pilot holes. You don't need to do any fancy pocket holes, just use pilot holes and wood screws. Before joining every single corner, I'm putting my speed square into that corner and as I actually join the 2x4s together, I'm holding in place to make sure that we have a perfectly square corner. It didn't take too long to build these, but honestly my pregnant belly really got in the way. Um, but this really goes to show you that really any level um, can build this kind of project. All you need is, you know, the patience to do it. This isn't a really complicated project. There are no complicated cuts. These are straight cuts and you're just assembling a box. Things are happening with the fireplace. Things are definitely happening. Things are not happening with my hair. I'm on day six. I need to wash my hair soon. Okay, so I finished making the two boxes last night and I honestly couldn't sleep because I just don't think that it's feasible for me to do this whole entire grand fireplace just given obviously the baby that's brewing. So this morning I decided I'm not gonna do the whole Spanish revival style, even though that is what my heart desires. Like my heart desires that to the core because I'll have to stand up on a ladder. We have nine foot ceilings. It just, it doesn't feel right. So we are gonna take that tape down. We're gonna simplify the project, but in good news, I got my fireplace and I wanted to show it to you. Okay, so here's the fireplace I chose. Um, I had a very hard time choosing between like this kind of like more traditional look versus like the long slender ones. Um, I couldn't find a long slender one in my budget in the size with logs. Like I really wanted to have logs. So this one actually, I don't know if you can tell, but there's no fire. It's like a, it's just like a, almost like a drawing of like a fire. Um, but you can also like adjust how red it is and stuff, which is cool. I like, I like this look. We created the rest of the frame. I worked on the sides um, and I think my husband honestly just felt bad for me because I'm so pregnant and he helped me out as well to help um, finish building the frame. All right, so now you can see that uh, that right there is where the fireplace is gonna fit in. Um, Ava said my cuts are really nice. I mean, they're always yeah. nice, right Ava? This is nice and square. Right, nice and I square. I said this this piece, it's not even attached, it's not screwed in yet, but it's like perfectly snug. Yeah. Today we are on fireplace installation day. Woo! Round of applause, please. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Avas. <laughs> yeah, so Avas is gonna help me. We're going to put the frame together, put the fireplace in, and then we'll show you guys what it looks like. So we actually need to take our baseboards off, um, and this is important because you want the frame to sit like flat against the wall. With the baseboards there, it won't. So I'm gonna be using my multi-tool. This is actually like one of my favorite tools. It's got so many different heads, it's so versatile, and I'm just gonna use it to slice the boards off. Uh, Multi-tool is a really versatile tool. I love this for cutting off ba baseboards anytime you need to do any type of built-in. That way you don't need to actually remove the entire baseboard off the wall. You just cut the section out that you need and then pry it off the wall. I uh, made the cuts for the, with the multi-tool. You can see it here maybe. And then you wanna score where there would be caulk because you the baseboards won't come off unless you get the caulking off.
So I had to get a vase to help me pry off the baseboard. Seems like this is gonna be a real pattern for this project. First, so a pilot hole is just like a drill bit that's the same size as your screw, and you make a hole, it's like a pre-hole, before you put the screw in, and that prevents your wood from splitting. So once you make the pilot hole, then you go in with a drill bit. This is an impact driver, okay? This is gonna make things a lot easier because it does all the work, all the muscle for you. So you use this to install your screw. Oh my, you won't believe what happened. So what happened was last night, I was actually like, okay, I'm gonna take the kids to my mom's house. And Avas was like, you know, I'm kind of tired. Just, you know, he's been really busy with work. So I was like, cool, no problem. I'll just take them. Like you, you have a chill night at home. Um, and yeah, that's what he did. Like, I can't believe that he did that. If you ask me, this project is done. What more could you want out of a fireplace? But you know, there's a lot more coming. So stay tuned. So I got this ugly brick from the hardware store and uh, yeah, it's ugly, but don't worry, we're gonna make it look a lot better. I just had them cut it down to like the rough sizes, but, but of course I need to cut the opening for the fireplace because the hardware store doesn't do like detailed cuts. So I'm just measuring it all and I'm marking it on this piece of brick that I have right in front of me. So I marked out the lines on the back and now I'm cutting it with a circular saw. I'm really hoping that this is gonna be the exact right size. Anytime you want to cut in between two lines, so like I have a line here and a line here, you have to use a jigsaw. But in order to get the jigsaw blade in, you need to use a really, really large drill bit. Drill a hole in the corner. So my, my hole will go right here in this corner here. And then you can put the jigsaw and then you just saw across. Here it goes. One, two, one, two. Here's a bit. I love your confidence. You measured it twice. Okay, I'm actually just using my drywall filler to try and close these gaps. And I'm not gonna make it perfect because it's fine, like the brick has some texture. I'm using my nail guns to attach all the panels to the frame. Let's cut down this piece of faux brick for the two side panels. Um, after that, oh, I'm gonna be done with all my woodworking. You know, I love woodworking, but it's hard when you're pregnant. I attached all the faux brick panels with my brad nailer. This is probably one of my favorite tools and it's cordless, so it's so easy to use. And then again, just going in with the drywall filler and closing up any of those gaps on, on the corners. Guys, I can totally see this fireplace coming together and it's looking so good. So we're putting on a coat of primer because we're gonna paint it next. And I'm getting my kids to help me because it's like a great memory that we're gonna have in our house. After all this work, I realized I made a mistake. Avas and I are debating whether I should fix it. Avas is saying, just leave it. And I am such a perfectionist that I cannot leave it. I cannot. And, uh, Okay, let's see if you guys can tell what it is. Okay, so do you see on this side, this is like a double brick. There's like every other brick is a double brick. So I actually put the piece on the wrong way or I had it cut the wrong way. The other thing is it's not perfectly aligned either. Like you can see it goes like, doo -doo, it goes down a bit. So we're gonna fix this. There is no such thing as a perfect project. I have yet to do a perfect project, so here I am cutting down another piece of panel for the brick. Luckily, I had just a little bit left over, so let's redo it, let's make sure it's level, and then let's fill the seams and prime it yet again. There's all these details I love to do that really give it that professional finish. So make sure you're caulking anywhere where the panels meet the walls. Um, that will really just, you know, make it look so much more professional and not beginner level. We did it, we're finally to the stage of painting and I have my painter's crew with me. So I got my kids helping me paint. And yeah, this is a little bit tedious cause you gotta paint in every single one of those lines and the cracks of the bricks. But I'm so excited because now I can see that the color is the right choice. I was not sure about black, but I think this is it. So here I am with my new fireplace. It is 
so cool to say that it never gets old um, when you build things with your hands no matter how many times you've built things it's always so exciting and I'm just so happy you guys are here cheering me on and you're like actually excited about my projects after I did the base color, it just wasn't giving me the look of a real brick. It looked very fake. So I wanted to give it some dimension. I added some urban bronze on top, which is just a little bit of like a lighter black with a hint of brown in it. And then I really tried to blend it in with a brush and a roller. So here's how it looks now that I've done all the like texturing of the two colors, the tricorn black and the urban bronze. And I think it actually looks like a real tile. Like it has really nice dimension. Um, it has the light and dark spots that real tiles do. So I'm just really happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Would you have done it a different color? Cause I actually debated doing white as well. Let me know in the comments below. Every fireplace needs a mantle, so I got this two inch thick spruce and I think it's so beautiful and I love the thickness of it. I used a wood conditioner and then I stained it early American and I think it's just perfectly beautiful. I just screwed it in with two screws. And ready, here is my fireplace. I am so in love with this. I think it's so beautiful and it just flows so well in my living room. So here it is, my DIY fireplace. I absolutely love this. It makes our house so cozy and ready for the winter and for the holidays too. Um, if you love this project, make sure you subscribe and add a comment below. Let me know any questions you have. I'm so happy to answer them for you. And I'll see you next time on my next DIY.